Hi everyone, I'm Mark Morgan with Intellisys, and today we're continuing the series of Mark having conversations with key players in the industry, and today we have the pleasure of speaking with Morgan Norman, who happens to be VP of Marketing, Corporate Brand, and Growth Strategies at Ring Central. How are you, Morgan? Hey, it's, it's, it's great to see you, Mark. Uh, thanks for having us here. Uh, we're having some uh, wild times over on the West Coast here, but uh, looking forward to talking about uh, what's happening in remote work strategies today. Tell us a little bit about what you do at Ring Central. Yeah, so I'm actually have a little bit of a bloated title. I'm uh, the VP of Corporate Brand and Growth Marketing. So what does that mean in the simplest ways? I'm responsible for the end-to-end experience of uh, uh, prospects that interact with us, as well as some of our customers. The way and the areas we touch on are the web, um, our sign-up flows and e-commerce, how folks are actually getting content, especially in this situation. Uh, we also are focused really big on digital events and all those touch points uh, when someone interacts and signs up with our existing product or becomes a customer of our product. I think your skill sets are being tested right now as a, anyone in the, in, the, in the marketing world, most definitely. With, uh, with, without a doubt, interesting times. Yes, it, it, it is very interesting. So. You know, it, 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 as, you, as you think about what's going on, both of us are channel companies. Um, you know, we've seen, we've, we've seen so much happen in a very small window of time. And, and um, you know, we've seen new markets open. We've seen new markets decline. Yeah. Um, you know, we've seen a tremendous of, amount of opportunity. We've seen a, not mm -hmm. only for net new business, but we've also mm -hmm. seen a, a tremendous amount of, of opportunity to to help to help people in the channel out to help people out that are outside of the channel and yep. everyday walks of life and um, give us an example of um, how Ring Central has helped helped customers or mm -hmm. e maybe even non customers in this yep. in this work go remote and COVID nineteen world with, that we're living in right now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great question. Um, the first thing is we are, we pride ourselves in being a channel and a partner driven company. Um, and that really helps us from a distribution perspective, but also to kind of touch all these customers where we don't have to have every feet on every foot on the street, if you will. The first thing is just like you said, is we have saw, we've seen the market shift on a weekly basis sometimes. Um, and some customers in some really desperate situations, some actually made the pivot pretty easily into this uh, remote world. And specific industries, we all know that now, uh, were really hit and some of them really hammered where there was opportunities and, there, and sometimes there was some, some more challenging directions. The first thing we did uh, was really do a specific COVID offering to help companies pivot as fast as possible with our partners to this remote driven world. Our goal was pretty simple. We thought every communication company has a duty right now to kind of help rebuild America or rebuild whatever country or dynamic you're from. And we offered this, obviously, a starting point was for education units, obviously folks in uh, municipalities, uh, public sector hospitals, but also mm -hmm. into the government arenas. And we just wanted to keep the country moving, if you will, as fast as possible. Uh, we saw a ton of uh, customers come on uh, aboard to us. I mean, in the, the tens and tens of thousands. Um, and most of them had a very common situation. It wasn't about, uh, you know, do they have a lot of time? They wanted something very secure. They wanted something that could be booted up very quickly, but they just wanted their people connected um, and they didn't know what was gonna happen next. The other thing also too, is we're learning as we're going, right? Um, one of the other areas is across small businesses, it's changing dynamically, uh, I would say every week right now, and a lot of them are reopening. The thing that we're trying to also spend a lot of our time, and I think you folks are doing a great job of this, is educating what we're seeing and trying to help customers make this pivot. Uh, we did a lot of this partnering uh, with actually what materials are available for certain types of businesses. How can they find these existing resources? And that's what they were asking us for. What was interesting, it wasn't specifically communication. So we wanted to kind of get this COVID offer out there. We wanted to also help these customers adapt. And we're still in that today. We did a lot of digital events and we're still kind of building up that curriculum to help customers adjust right now and help their employees and customers adjust. You know, if, if you think about Intellisys and, and, and how we've, you know, have we gone to market from an educational perspective, mm -hmm. from a training perspective? It's always been so upfront and personal. So, yeah. you know, right there with a big group of people and, and the team has always done a great job with that. And, 
you know, we've made this, we've made this transition. We've made it. Well, I, I say we've made a transition. We've executed very well mm -hmm. on putting training and education programs in place that have garnered a lot of attendees. And quite frankly, a lot yeah. of attendees that stuck for the entire 45 minutes to yeah. that stay. And we measured that. Um, but, you know, I just got off the phone here, right, you know, 20 minutes prior to you and I getting on this call and asking one of our key partners, you know, what's working, what's not. And, mm -hmm. and their, their, their response was, what's going to be your next iteration, your yeah. next iteration of this yeah. digital training and education thing? Because we believe that there's going to be a slow roll to to things going you know and i hate saying new normal old normal yeah, whatever yeah. but a slow roll to people feeling comfortable mm -hmm. with with face to face you know our guys i know yeah. our organization is dying to get out yeah, yeah. and yeah. And, and, it, and it's a split so how, what do you think the next iteration of yeah, this I, video training digital thing is what do you think you're the yeah i i, I love your I love your thinking, Mark. I think one is we've learned a lot from our partners because if you can work together as a community like we have, we can learn faster. And that's the first thing. The, the thing that we're spending a lot of time is that we're doing a lot of research on a daily basis to see what's working for some partners and what customers are expecting. I do agree with you that um, everyone's dying to get back out there. And I do think we'll have a lot of uh, more uh, boutique style events that um, kind of get folks together in every different region. That's going to happen when it happens. Exactly. I think it'd be different across different, different, different States, if you will. Digital is, is, and I, I love that you said, I don't want to use this word, the new norm, because it is getting tiresome. But um, I think the real key thing is going to be helping customers adapt, but also making sure that they can leverage these tools internally for their employee base. So a lot of it is education at the self, at the individual level, like IT here, I need to know, is this secure? How fast can I boot this up? What's, if I need to change my office strategy, that, that's happening. But now the next wave is about how we are all gonna work together in this, this situation. Do 20% of our employees never come back ever? Uh, do they wanna you know, live on a ranch somewhere? You know, Those are gonna be these other types of areas. The other thing I would say is that, all of us as partners are gonna to have to think about doing things that break through the noise. There's a lot of bad content out there, just to be really direct, it's, it's really self-serving. I think the way uh, IntelliSys is approaching it and how we're partnering with, with you folks is a little bit different. We wanna make sure they make that leap. So we're gonna to have to think of some unique ways to break through that. I also think smaller bite-sized content is gonna be really critical, um, where someone could jump in on a coffee break or in between meetings and see 10 minutes versus uh, long form. So those are the things we're thinking about presently. Yeah, that's those, those are those are great points. And when you say bite size, yeah, um, do you think the size of the bite is is has grown or decreased? You know, I used to people used to say, yeah. that, "Hey, it's every you know three minutes, no more than three minutes, and then it moved to four. Um, yeah. What do you think? I do think it's going to be less than ten, but I think it's going to be a multi-part series. So let's say if you have a really healthy dialogue and it's meaningful. Um, you know, and even for your partners out there, it's very easy to cut this same section into 10 minute increments and allow me to do it at my own pace. That's also easier for me to share and allow someone to find the value in that that's specific and meaningful. Um, so I think it's going to sit around there, but it's not to say that the, the full curriculum isn't there. I do think we're, it's changing so fast. A lot of the principles we know in marketing aren't working right now. Um, we're having to rethink every way we uh, approach campaigns and approach kind of webinars or events, if you will. Yeah, you know, we're not looking for the biggest, the most flair, the most creative. Yeah. We're looking for the most impactful because because of that that moment that moment in time. And and by the way, I've always tended to believe everyone says that yes, we provide value, and I, I think yeah. value tends to be a, a ten, it, it's one of the the most overused buzzwords. Yeah, primarily because value tends, you could have a 10 person organization and value means 10 different things. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're in this quest for, you know, how do, how do we find, how do we find and understand what's valuable to each individual inside of a partner's organization? Yeah, you know, uh, you're hitting some really big points we're thinking about, uh, Mark. I think the one thing that we're really debating right now 
and to on that value point is, is your ideal customer profile the same? And, and, and that goes back to the value points, right? Are they gonna ex ex experience value in the product? And I think you've nailed it, which is a value for a remote worker or a value for someone who's now got a boot up offices remote is very different than how it was on a campus site, you know, which we've all dealt with together. Right. Um, I do think that um, we're learning and it's really important for all of us to kind of say, okay, what are we hearing out there and share these lessons in our kind of partner community, which we do. Um, and then it's the question is when we pivot, what's effective, what's not. I noticed the first couple things we did just so when this first happened, uh, we did some early uh, uh, responses to COVID, but we started moving to digital events. And I have to be direct with you is the first couple ones weren't very successful. And that's an example of that value point where you think you're driving value, but it wasn't what they were looking for. And what we realized is they were in a much more desperate situation yeah. and they wanted very specific, mm -hmm. like, tell me what to do. I need to know what to do. And we made a pivot. So I, I appreciate that angle. And I think I've got a lot to learn there uh, in the next kind of quarter or so as well yeah yeah that's that's great points because you know i think uh, one of the first you know late afternoon this was probably in week one um um rachel casellas from ring ha yeah. hosted a hosted a happy hour there were probably 60 or 70 people there and yeah thought, wow this is awesome but you know like four straight hangovers later um, <laughs> Yeah, it, it's, you know, there's a lot of creativity going on there. We're trying to, you know, we're trying to address staying engaged, but most importantly, helping people understand where, where current and emerging opportunities are. Yeah. Um, so that, I think that's a good segue to the question yeah. of, you know, you've been in the channel for a while. Yeah. And, um, you know, if, if there's, there's this tremendous, there's this tremendous opportunity to support businesses in a different way so how do you see the channel and ring yeah um coming out of this and what do you see with it, you know for the future for for both parties there yeah so um the the it what i would say is the one thing about the channel in my experience this is years of dealing with it, the channel is always very authentic to themselves it, it, i've always noticed that the companies really represent the people and um sometimes in technology you don't always see that there's a gap Right, and I, I've never seen that in the channel. Um, one is that you know we have a brand new president, a uh, brand new CRO that have both come from Microsoft and very channel centric. I mean, one of the greatest uh, channel uh, uh, player or strategy players out there. Um, we believe that that's what's unique about our strategy. We're actually going to invest a lot more in that, and that includes how we market together is going to going to evolve. Um, the thing that we need to understand with the channel partners is how far we can go together beyond digital events, how we can participate instead of just doing the event, what's the campaign before it? What's the campaign after it? How do we actually kind of continue that and plan together with it throughout a year on what we can do together? Um, I think the other thing that I think we can uh, have a unique advantage of with partners is we can help them modernize. There's a lot of things that are in the works right now. Uh, some folks you've seen that we've launched video. There's a lot of other stuff we're launching that can enable a channel partner to jump in, you know, forward many, many years that other players are not giving access to. You still have to, you know, get your leads and do the handoff. We're thinking about it differently. My ask of the channel would be is where can you modernize today? And that doesn't mean you need to be ring central. It doesn't mean you need to be the most advanced company but be really uh, specific on where your skill sets are, where your skill set gaps are. And that's gonna help us figure out what channel direction and how we do market development with them. Um, our goal, you know, one is obviously we, we need to build the right business for shareholders and, and employees and customers. But the other goal is we believe this is the opportunity for communications. I mean, Intellis is gonna be in a better position in the world right now, because um, you have so many different ways of approaching this. But we need to kind of figure that out is, there's some partners that just have never experienced this stuff. Well, let's help them get there. Let's make it simple. Let's break it down into some campaigns. Let's do a couple together. And there's some that are way more advanced saying, hey, how far can I go that helps me move into a non-phone world or a phone world, depending what, what area they want to focus in. So um, I think it's really partnering at a marketing side. It is all marketing at first right now. We're in a marketing-driven world, in a product-driven world, and a partner-driven world. There's no way we can reach the world without partners like yourself. Um, and we take a different approach than a lot of the other players. Yeah. 
you know, for us, we're, we're, you know, we, we, we try to create the right marketing tools. We try yeah. to, you know, we, we stay arm's length away from end users, but yeah. for us is where are the pockets of opportunities and how can we help partners drive demand and, and ring and, and Intellisys have done a pretty good job over yeah. the past couple of years of working together to go do that. So we appreciate that. And this has been a definite study in human behavior. Yeah, definitely. And, and hopefully we've, we've learned a lot and we can, we can all come out of this and, and um, continue to help the channel community and continue yeah. to help uh, the businesses that we need so desperately to, to be reopened and, and start moving back in, in the right direction. So we're happy to be, to be a partner of Ring Central. We're happy to be participating in whatever way we are and keeping businesses working today. And yeah. I, I sincerely appreciate your time today. It's been great chatting with you.